I am Pastor David Becker, Pastor of St. John's Lutheran Church of Aiken. Thank you for tuning in today. Thanks also to KKIN Radio for broadcasting this service. It's also available online at stjohnaitkin.org. That's St. John Aiken. Org. The present time we're holding in-person services on Sunday mornings at 9 a.m. On this, the seventh Sunday of Easter, we make our beginning in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. We now confess our sins. O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities, with which I have ever offended you and justly deserved your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. Upon this your confession, I by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto you, and in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Hear, O Lord, when I cry aloud. Be gracious to me and answer me. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? One thing I have asked of the Lord, that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. For he will hide me in the shelter the day, in the day of trouble. He will conceal me under the cover of his tent. He will lift me high upon a rock. For my mother and my father have forsaken me, but the Lord will take me in. Wait for the Lord, be strong, and let your heart take courage. Wait for the Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Hear, O Lord, when I cry aloud. Be gracious to me, and answer me. Let us pray. O King of glory, Lord of hosts, uplifted and triumph far above all heavens, leave us not without consolation, but send us the spirit of truth whom you promised from the Father. For you live and reign with the Him and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first reading comes from the book of Acts, chapter 1, and I'll begin at the 12th verse. Then the apostles returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem a Sabbath day's journey away. And when they had entered, they went up to the upper room where they were staying. Peter and John and James and Andrew and Philip and Thomas and Bartholomew and Matthew, James, the son of Altheus, and Simon the Zealot, and Judas, the son of James. All these with one accord were devoting themselves to prayer together with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus and his brothers. In those days, Peter stood up among the brothers. The company of persons was about 120 and said, Brothers, the scripture had to be fulfilled, which the Holy Spirit spoke beforehand by the mouth of David concerning Judas, who became a guide to those who arrested Jesus. For he was numbered among us and was allotted his share in this ministry. Now this man bought a field with the reward of his wickedness, and falling headlong, he burst open in the middle, and all his bowels gushed out, and it became known to all the inhabitants of Jerusalem, so that the field was called in their own language, Al-Kadama, which that is, field of blood. For it is written in the book of Psalms, may his camp become desolate, and let there be no one to dwell in it, and let another take his office. So one of the men who had accompanied us during all the time that the Lord went in and out among us 
beginning from the baptism of John until the day when he was taken up from us, one of these men must become with us a witness of his resurrection. And they put forward two, Joseph called Barsabas, who was also called Justice and Matthias. And they prayed and said, You, Lord, who know the hearts of all, show which one of these two you've chosen to take the place of this ministry and the apostleship from which Judas turned aside to go to his own place. And they cast lots for them, and the lot fell on Matthias, and he was numbered with the eleven apostles. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our epistle lesson comes from the first letter of St. John, chapter 5, and I'll begin with the ninth verse. If we, have if we receive the testimony of men, the testimony of God is greater. For this is the testimony of God that he has borne concerning his Son. Whoever believes in the Son of God has the testimony in himself. Whoever does not believe, God has made him a liar because he has not believed in the testimony that God has borne concerning his Son. And this is the testimony that God gave us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. Whoever has the Son has life. Whoever does not have the Son of God does not have life. I write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God, that you may know that you have eternal life. And this is the confidence that we have toward him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us in whatever we ask, we know that we have the requests that we have asked of him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And our gospel lesson comes from the Gospel of St. John, chapter 17. Jesus said, Holy Father, keep them in your name, which you've given me, that they may be one, even as we are one. While I was with them, I kept them in your name, which you've given me, I have guarded them, and not one of them has been lost except the Son, destruction, that the scriptures might be fulfilled. But now I am coming to you, and these things I speak in the world, that they may have joy fulfilled in themselves. I have given them your word, and the world has hated them, because they are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. I do not ask you to take them out of the world, but that you keep them from the evil one. They are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. Sanctify them in the truth. Your word is truth. As you sent me into the world, so I have sent them into the world. And for their sake I consecrate myself, that they also may be sanctified in truth. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise be to thee, O Christ. When parents a mother or a father leave their child in the care of someone else, they may make a list of things that need to be done, like feed the child at 5.30. Uh, maybe there's a certain meal that they should make, uh, something that the parents know that the child will eat. Um, maybe uh, there's a certain bedtime, a time in which they want the child to go to bed the parents would give a list of things for that babysitter to do and to take care of. Why do those parents give such instructions? It's because they love their child very much and they want to make sure the sitter takes good care of that child. In our gospel lesson for today, we hear Jesus praying to his father, He's about to go away. He's about to leave his disciples. And because he loves his disciples, he asks his father to take care of them the way parents might ask a babysitter to take care of a child. Jesus even gave his father a list of ways to take care of them. Two of the items were this. First, he wanted his father to protect them. And the second request was that they unify them. Even right before he died, Jesus was thinking about us. 
He wanted his father to watch over us just the, as our parents might want a babysitter or a grandparent or someone else to watch over their children. When we get older, we sometimes face hard times. Um, in those times, we can remember that Jesus loves us very much. When he died on the cross, he didn't leave us forever, but he came back to life. And even when he went to heaven, he left us in very good care. He is praying to his Father. He's given us his Holy Spirit. And he's always with us himself. He's with us in his word. He's with us in the Lord's Supper. He is with us to bless us. And for that, we can be thankful. Amen. We continue with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our gospel lesson is serving as our text for today, John chapter 17, verses 11 to 19, of which I just want to read the following, where Jesus says, Holy Father, keep them in your name. That's what Jesus asked his father to do, to keep them in his name. This is a part, our text is a part of what we call Jesus' high priestly prayer. This is a prayer that Jesus prayed on the night when he was betrayed. Jesus knew that the time would come when he would no longer visibly be present with his disciples. The next day, Jesus was going to be put to death. And then, after rising again on the third day, and after occasionally appearing to his disciples for a period of 40 days, Jesus would ascend into heaven. By the way, last Thursday was Ascension Day. That's because last Thursday was 40 days after Easter. So what we have here in our text is a part of that high priestly prayer that Jesus prayed. He prayed, Holy Father, keep them in your name, which you have given me, that they may be one, even as we are one. While I was with them, I kept them in your name, which you've given me. I have guarded them. The Greek word that's translated keep, um, can be translated in a variety of ways. Besides being translated by the word keep, the word can also have the meaning of pay attention to, as one might pay attention to something that is precious to that person. Another meaning of that word is, uh, is protect. Now in our text, we have that Greek word that's translated keep twice. The first time it's used, Jesus asked his father to keep them in your name. And then later on, Jesus says, I've kept them in your name. Same Greek word. Keep them in your name. I've kept them in your name. There's another Greek word in our text uh, that, can, that is synonymous, it's a different word, but it's synonymous with the word translated keep. It is the Greek word that's translated guard, as in Jesus saying, I have guarded them. The Greek word, um, besides being translated by the word guard, can be translated by the words keep and protect. Keeping and guarding is what Jesus himself had been doing for his disciples while he was with them. 
but he would soon be coming to his father. That's why he prays, Father, keep them in your name. On this Mother's Day, I would like to connect what Jesus is asking his father, Heavenly Father to do with what Jesus asked mothers to do. That is, keep their children safe. That is, pay attention to their children. Why? Because those children are precious. And Jesus asked parents, mothers, and fathers to guard and protect their children. That's why in this day and age, a good mother will put her child in a car seat because she knows that's the best way to keep a child safe while driving. She wants to guard and protect that child. Now, before I go on, I have to tell you that I think my mother was a good mother, even though she never put me in a car seat. She never put me in a car seat because when I was a child, cars didn't even have seat belts. Now, I know some kids don't like being kept in a car seat. Maybe they think that car seat is too restrictive. Maybe they think that car seat keeps them from moving around in the car like they'd like to do. Well, in the same way, you and I sometimes don't like the way God the Father tries to keep us in his name. We don't like the way his law keeps us from doing some of the things we want to do. In that respect, you and I are sometimes like Judas, who's called the son of destruction. Judas gave into the temptation to rebel against God. Jesus gave into the temptation to betray Jesus. The sad truth is there are times when you and I rebel against God. There are times when you and I betray Jesus. When we recognize our sin for what it is, the thing for us to do is not what Judas did. Judas despaired of even going on living. No, what we need to do is to repent of our sin and to return to our Heavenly Father who loves us with the kind of love that wants to guard and keep us. Now Jesus also wants to sanctify us in the truth. The Greek word that's translated sanctify is closely related to the Greek word that's translated by the word holy, as in the word that modifies spirit when we're talking about the third person of the Trinity. The root of both of those words, sanctify and holy, point to something that is set apart as sacred to God. Well, sanctified is what we are through the water and word of holy baptism. We are set apart to be God's children. We receive the gift of the Holy Spirit who gives us faith and who guards and keep us in the faith through word and sacrament. Yes, Jesus prayed, sanctify them in your truth. And then he goes on to say, your word is truth. Earlier, Jesus had prayed, I have given them your you see, the Word of God is very important. The Word of God is important because it not only teaches us right from wrong as it speaks God's law, it's important because it points us to Jesus as the only Savior from sin. Jesus died for each and every sin you and I have ever committed. He died for all those times when we have rebelled against God. He died for all the thoughts, words, and deeds which are contrary to God's commandments. He died and rose again so that all our sin could be forgiven. The gospel message for us and for others is this good news. The good news of salvation through Jesus Christ. And Jesus not only sends his disciples into the world with that message, he sends us in the world as well. He wants to use mothers and fathers to bring the good news of their, to their children. He wants to use each and every one of us to tell others about Jesus. You see, he wants to guard and keep us and others. He wants to sanctify us and others through his word. He wants to make us and others holy 
by the power of his Holy Spirit through word and sacrament, that's because each and every one of us is precious in his sight. Amen. Now may the peace of God which surpasses all understanding keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Let us pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, you've gathered us again before your presence. Grant that we may dwell in your house all the days of our lives and gaze upon your beauty. Graciously receive us as we inquire in your temple. Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, as you sent your Son into the world and he sent his apostles into the world, so now also send your ministers that the world may know your name and the salvation that comes by it. Almighty Father, through your Son, you gave your word to your children on earth. Guard and strengthen those who are hated by the world because they are not of the world, that not one of them would be lost. Lord of all nations, since it is your will that we pray for all in authority, we believe with confidence that, we hear our, that you hear our prayers for our president, our governor, our congress, our legislature, our judges, our police force, and those serving in the armed forces. Teach them the testimony of the truth that they may be wise and effective as they do their duty. Eternal Father, you have testified that eternal life is given in your Son, that whoever has him has life. You promise also that you will hear whatever we ask according to your will. We pray now, comfort and help the sick and the distressed, especially those that we now name in our hearts. Heal them and give life to all those who hold your Son in faithful hearts. Holy Father, accept the prayers we offer through your Son. Keep us forever in your name and word that we may be one just as you are one. Sanctify us in your truth and help us to remember that your word is truth. Heavenly Father, your Son in his incarnation took on our human flesh and was born of the Virgin Mary. He submitted to his mother, honoring and obeying her, so fulfilling the commandment where we have not. On this Mother's Day, graciously accept our thanksgiving for our mothers whom you've given us. Teach us to honor them, loving, obeying, and giving thanks for them as is fitting in your sight. Strengthen all women with child and give them safe delivery. Comfort all women who long to have children but cannot, that they may find their consolation in you and your unfailing love. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. And we pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Receive now the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Once again, I'm Pastor David Becker of St. John's Lutheran Church of Aiken. Thank you for tuning in today. I pray that you'll have a blessed week.